Good evening. It is Friday, December 24th, 2021 here in Sarasota, Florida, Christmas Eve. And yes, I am sticking to my goal of doing 28 videos in 28 days in this series called Giving Myself Voice. Now, I could take this in a lot of directions today, and I am going to try to weave a couple of different <laughs> it's so challenging to give words to where we're going. When I started my company of me, how I started was I thought to myself, what are some of my greatest strengths that I have seen reflections out in the regular world back to me? more than a few, telling me that people value, appreciate these particular skills. And the top two things that came to me instantly, all fall, they both fall under the umbrella of communication. I communicate and express extremely well, written and verbal. And in the regular world, right? For lack of a better way, regular, mainstream, 3D awake, 5D and beyond, out of this world, completely different is where we're going. I had my awakening. I saw this. I had seen and felt this since I was a little girl. And at my awakening, I finally stopped looking outside of myself for external validation from others that what I saw, felt, knew to be true because I was never going to find it outside of myself. One, because at that time, still today, relative to the 8 billion plus on the planet, there aren't that many people in form that, that see this in the detail that I do. Like we're talking blowing everything of the regular world out of the water. No such thing as retirement. No such thing as higher education as we know it. No such thing as money, you know, hoarding a bunch and saving a bunch of money. It's not needed. Like blowing every aspect out of the water for how we've been conditioned and truly seeing this and feeling it. So the place I had to start was, okay, what skill sets do I have that I could theoretically earn money to pay my bills so that I can focus all of my time and effort in this world and not have to continue to suffer as I had been in the regular world, trying to fit in, falling so far short of what I'm capable of doing and want to be doing because of the model and the systems that comprise, define, and, you know, define this, this system and this reality. Okay. You can't, it's mutually exclusive. This is where we're going. This is where we've been. And they're completely different. And therefore, because part of this conditioning has been to kill our imaginations, not many, even when I've been trying to lay out all the dots, you know, like I can't do the actual connecting for people but I can lay out as many dots as possible to try to guide people just to get the vision because the vision isn't just my vision from my perspective. It's the one vision. It's the great truth, which is we are all ultimately connected. If we go up the family tree, if you think of it like that. However, at this time, we still have to make choices through our individual personalities, through our characters, and navigate in a world that has us convinced that we're not one, that we're entirely separate. So now you're maybe beginning to feel the challenge of this, right? So I thought, okay, people get paid all the time to be inspirational speakers. People get paid all the time to write things that resonate and make people feel good. I can do both of those. People have told me my entire life how well I write and speak. Sidebar is the fact that I'm still not able to be drawing in earnings, doing either of these things, 
like I said, I have to accept that something, I'm not putting something out in the universe that's clear enough because I know my value in being able to speak and write. And I know what I'm saying resonates and this is how I know. I started my company on November 30th. It, on November 30th, 2012, it would become legal on January 1st, 2013. But because it was online and I knew I was starting with writing, I knew I, I kind of had some leeway in terms of what the official launch date was for me. And if you know me even just a little bit, you know that I am a numbers person and I have multiple layers of multiple meanings in absolutely everything that I do absolutely everything. It's why when I communicate, most people don't have a freaking clue what the hell I'm really saying, because oftentimes they're only receiving and able to receive one dimension of it. As a, And I'm never just speaking to one dimension. So I start with a blog, a written blog on November 30th. For four months, almost every day, I was writing 15 to 1800 word blog entries and I was getting substantial traffic on my website. In fact, so much so that my webmaster, who at the time, very good at what she does, was not new to making websites and tracking their how long people stay on the page and what the draw in. She was astounded because it wasn't really clear what the hell I was doing. It was just written blog posts and I was getting over a hundred hits a day and people were staying on the site. They were reading every word of the entries, okay? From all over the globe. I was getting hits from all over the globe. Now, unfortunately, remember, I started with an investment in a team. My problem was I was naive, I was young, I was immature, and I did not, was not able to communicate that and really erroneously felt like we were already communicating telepathically, which I do believe is absolutely possible. And I do believe that's closer than we could even possibly imagine. And plus, I was still really uncomfortable giving myself voice. So when I say when this has been nine years and this is the missing piece, actually standing up tall and being able to distribute what I really mean to the best of my ability. And I that it's hard enough to do it if I'm not tiptoeing around energies. If I'm tiptoeing around earthbound ego energies, forget it. I'm never going to be able to get through what I'm trying to get through. Hence why this momentum and why even though I am exhausted today, like look at my eyes, I, I am exhausted today. Um, and I am pushing through because the momentum of moving this Keeping building this for 28 days is being done, like I said in an earlier video, very purposely and with great intent, mostly just to get the momentum because I'm trying to learn all the lessons where I kind of, I don't want to say where I messed up nine years ago when this started. I didn't mess up. I, what happened was intended to happen. You know, it was undesirable. I didn't plan for the way that it played out to play out that way, but I don't, the word mistake is not in my vocabulary. The word failure is not in my vocabulary. Undesirable is, and boy, I had a lot of undesirable consequences and things that happened. And I am, as I really step into my work for the first time since then, since nine years ago with this magnitude of confidence, and now with nine years of lessons and wisdom behind me, and the ability to speak to very literally being on the other side in huge ways of a six-figure leap of faith. This is not made up. This is not just words. And I'm trying to learn the lessons. And one of the lessons was clear communication, okay? Um, and really trying to make it as simple and small as possible. Spreading something out to many that is super small and doable, okay? And I started by writing this and people were resonating big time. But after four months, what I realized was my life, 
saying the words is one thing. Living the words is completely different. Saying the words is one thing. And boy, I, because I channel, this is, it comes through me. I have been a wide open heart-based vessel. You know, you are going to be hard pressed to find somebody in a smaller body with as much heart energy as I have had for this entire life. And I was so innocent that that was wide open when I started last time. So the words were coming from well beyond me. And because remember yesterday when I said, this is all about remembering. This is all about remembering. And what I'm trying to do more than adversely trigger people is to trigger these memories. And the ultimate memory is we don't have to settle for this being the game that we're playing and these twisted rules and this horribly limiting reality. All it takes is for us to agree to play a different game with different rules. But it is so different, this greater truth, that the transition is not an easy one. It's not an easy one. And it does take learning lessons, learning lessons, taking risks, having an intention and going out with an idea and then having it not play out the way that you thought. That's how you learn. As an athlete, referencing more from yesterday, we learn more from our losses than we do from our wins, okay? So I am trying to learn from the last time. One, I cannot not take care of myself. First and fucking foremost, I gave all that money away and it wasn't even really, well, it's no less real than any other form of money, right? Because none of it's fucking real, but I gave that away and I did use half of it to, to support myself for a year so that I wouldn't have to work for somebody else and I could get a running start, which I did on all of this. But what quickly became evident was you have to live it. You have to live it. You talk it really good, Allison, and you channel a lot of the greater truths. And it's affecting people because that is what connects us all, because it is greater truth with a capital T. But part of the navigation is to learn how to utilize that knowing. And, and, and I don't like the word manipulate. It's, and I, I don't even really particularly like the word navigate either. But it's, it was having to go through, I had to go through the third dimensional world, but I didn't realize that out of the gate. Out of the gate, I was so naive and I thought I was going to be living this. And what I didn't realize and was not prepared for was that you have to go through the 3D. So that is why from round one, I knew this was going to be an incredibly difficult thing to do because it is so different. And what became clear immediately was, I, I cannot describe it. I could, I could talk from now for the next 50 years, nonstop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and still not be able to even come close to giving the words to what the reality, the greater reality is and the greater truths are, and how far we're from that in the paradigm that's collapsing. So I had to live it. And the magical thing that happened was, by virtue of taking a $96,480 leap of faith, I then turned it all over to spirit, to God, to creation, to the multiverse. Because in handling the very real consequences of how wrong it all went and how ill-prepared I was for my naivete, it, it, it guided me. For all of these years, it guided me to what I believe my destiny is. I have to still make choices, but when I made that choice, I turned my life over to spirit. And ever since then, I've just been, I've just been catching up with it and lining every piece of my life and not settling. And that's challenging because we still have to pay bills and live in this paradigm. So it's, it is super subtle, super subtle at the energetic level. 
the intentions, the motives, the, the, at the energetic level to play that game, but not really. It looks like I'm playing that game because I still have to go through the, the motions of that game. Using my company is a legal business. And as you're going to see, as I roll out this Ripple project, this is nine years, fourth iteration of this project, of this idea, of this vision, working to bring something that's way up here down to meet the paradigm that's collapsing to serve as a bridge. And it's intended to be a bridge for as many people as want to cross, as many people. And the work to build that bridge has been my blood, sweat, and tears. Now, I believe that it was my role and what my soul came here to do. So selfishly, I'm serving my soul's mission. But one of the hesitations I had was to stand confidently and strongly in what I've done for fear of it appearing as ego. Because I cannot stand, as I've mentioned, that ego energy, oh, and the trickiness of the people in the spiritual world that still have blind spots to the ego energy. Like I, I didn't want any part of being assumed that I was being driven selfishly by the ego. But what I've learned, and it's taken a very long time, is I cannot control that. But what I could do is allow my life to speak for itself. And it has in enormous ways that will take me way more than 17 more episodes to lay out, okay? Now, I share all this because balance, balance has been incredibly tough for me, incredibly tough to be balanced, especially given how intense my energy is and how much energy I have always had. Ask my mom. I was so eager to get into this life and get started on my mission that I was born six weeks early. Six weeks early. That's how eager and how, how I came out of the womb running in this life. And it's taken every bit of these 46 years to begin, just to begin to find balance. And part of that right now, in the here and now, a huge part of me balancing all the aspects of my world right now is doing these videos, even when I feel exhausted and like it's going to be impossible for me to transmit anything of value today. Because I came up from out of town in Miami and had to go right to the farm yesterday within two hours and our systems crashed and like, <laughs> and it's the end of the year. And I have to do all this 3D shit for that business for a farmer who really isn't able to express one iota of appreciation or gratitude. And I'm not trying to be a martyr. I'm really not. And that's a whole nother aspect of why I keep, I, I can't, there, it just doesn't resonate that it's the right decision to let it go. Because if I leave, the farm will close. And that is not an ego statement. That is a statement of fact. And only a couple of people in the whole community understand that. And now, as I'm trying to launch my project, break through after nine years to have to do that, which is in these energies, while navigating the magnitude of the third dimensional shit that I have to handle at the end of the year for this business that I told you, not enormous, but $1.4 million gross sales with a lot of shit that we got to take care of, a lot of permits, a lot of, a lot of things that need renewing and workers comp and vehicle insurance and food permits and our organic certification is due and everything, W-2s, all of this shit. And I can't, this is why I developed my business just to be me and as simple as possible and why I'm taking however long it takes to make sure I have as little of that 3D shit as possible. Yet spirit has guided me and I have tried leaving twice 
leaving the farm and I keep getting guided back. And I know that ultimately two of the biggest things I am there to learn once and for all that the farm is aiding me tremendously if I stop resisting and stop fighting is balance and boundaries. Balance and boundaries. It's also a reason why I've got a whole playlist for juggling and why juggling is a part of my world, okay? Juggling, what I'm balancing. And what I'm literally trying to do is set up a framework so this farm can stay open without me having to be present, which has taken years and crazy intentions with no conscious participation or awareness from the owner. But I feel his higher self because he is a very spiritual being. But like most men close to me, the emotional maturity is nil, absolutely fucking nil. And again, that hits at, so I, if you notice, I'm hitting at a lot of topics here with this and I'm winging it today because I really am exhausted and I need to go take a bath and go to bed and start again tomorrow. But this is what came to me to share today. And what I'm trying to do is when my project takes off and I will say when, even though I'm not attached to it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm going to say when it takes off, it is not going to be small to manage. So I will have to pull away from here. Okay. So I am trying to set up the foundation and I've purposely been doing this for years. I purposely don't work on weekends at the farm if I can help it, Peeny, because my races take place on the weekend, and that's another form of income, like juggling. My whole world for nine years has been juggling the old and the new with completely different energies. If you have ever juggled and you try to, it's one thing to juggle tennis balls that are all the same weight and size. Try to juggle a tennis ball, a golf ball, and a basketball. That's what I've been doing. It is a completely different skill to juggle three different size balls with all different weights, completely different than juggling three balls, the same size and the same weight. And I know, I know I'm breaking through. I feel like I might have already broken through, but I'm, I'm staying grounded and always humble as can be. And I am not letting up on this 28 days. And I didn't know ahead of time per se, that it was going to fall like in the Christmas and New Year's holiday. But then when it ended up lining up the way that it did to my 13 moon calendar, <laughs> holy shit, like that's going to be a video in and of itself. I thought about talking about that today. So maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. So I don't know what, I don't know what I'm at. I don't know how to, I don't know how to read on Zoom, how long I've been going. I want to try to keep these shorter. Um, let me try to feel like a, 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 an appropriate wrap up. I started as a written blog post. By the way, all of those are going to be the foundation for my first book. I mean, I, I definitely have 70% of my first book done and an idea of how to do it, but putting it into these products, like people also don't understand from an artist's perspective. And that's another reason why Mark's class put me over the fucking edge. I'm like, how come I can't draw in somebody to help me with the technology side? As if the content isn't hard enough. Like, yeah, I do this naturally and I enjoy it, but this is work. This is work. And it's work to keep my vessel in a place where I can channel this. Trying to then put it together in a product I just, it's like, how, how much more can I be doing on my own? And that's another topic for another conversation. And I've alluded to this as well. It's unbelievable how much I've done with barely any support. And now I sense that as I lose the fear for real to stand as tall in what has already been done. Last time it was words and it resonated, but I hadn't done anything yet. I hadn't lived it yet. Come here, little girl. Come here. Now I'm on the other side. I have real things to speak to and real balance. I am genuinely balanced in an unprecedented place. And that's how I know. I told you what's going on inside of me right now is real. It is real. And I am, I don't know if I'm having a delayed reaction to the event. I don't know if it's just because, you know, 
the navigation of, you know, just leaving town in the 3D reality of leaving my world here, which is very busy with a lot of responsibility and then doing it all so quickly. It, I mean, like I literally was spinning today. I had to get to the bank before noon and I was spinning in the car. I had to sit in the parking lot for a couple of hours because I'm just like, holy shit, you know, like breathe, ground, confident with humility. Episode three of my podcast, Confidence in Humility. Those podcasts, those first 12 episodes, those weren't accidental. Everything, I've been laying dominoes out. I have put all the dots out before, but now I'm gonna try to put them out again. I'm gonna try to put them out in a way where they're undeniable to be seen by anybody who wants to see it, and who's willing to see it. If you want to, and if you're willing, which is hand in hand, it's almost impossible for somebody not to be drawn into this. Because like I said, what's coming through me is what represents the greater truth of all of us. This illusion of separation is just that. It's an illusion. This shift into a new reality is fucking real. And it's happening. And we're not gonna get anywhere by staying on sides and fighting and the us versus them. I'm trying to find one high level theme that we can agree upon. Can we not agree? No matter where you are on any side of any spectrum, can we not agree that the world could drastically benefit from massive and real change? Real change, not putting lipstick on a pig and then calling it a beautiful young woman. It's still a pig and no offense to the pig, but that is what has been going on. It hasn't been different. And even though I question Einstein's role in things, he's got a couple of really good quotes and he's got one of my favorites. You cannot solve problems from the same level of consciousness that created them. You must see the world anew. Ripple 2020 is definitely seeing the world anew, but I had to bring it down at least. And I purposely, I wanted to bring it down to the third dimension as little as I could touch down, but I had to connect here so that the bridge could exist. And that's what it is. And today, maybe, maybe I was able to portray that in a way that I haven't been able to, but it's okay if I didn't, because like I said, I'm not stopping. And I know to what extent I'm living this. Like, and I am not settling this time for all the people that get uncomfortable with any one or multiple aspects of what I'm doing, because it will be triggering. It absolutely will be. It will make people uncomfortable. And last time, I wasn't able to stand tall in it because I didn't have anything in the physical to back me up. I had no fucking person, that's for sure. But worse, I didn't have anything manifested yet to back me up. I still don't have many people, but you better believe I have physical manifestation after physical manifestation showing to what degree I've been living this. And if one can't see it, I'm not accepting that responsibility. I am portraying it here and I'm not watering it down and I'm not lowering it. The project itself is as low as it's going. It's all ready and we're gonna get into some of the shit in the roll box that I hit with that already, including I wanted it to be a dollar donation, $4 million by 4 million people for $1, but guess what? PayPal takes 55 fucking cents per, 55 cents per transaction. I can't afford to eat that. So now the website is all, it's in motion because I changed it to $2 because I got to cover that cost. So I'm having to work out aspects of it, but that's okay. It's okay because I am freer and more confident than I've ever been with any of this. So I'm going to conclude for now because this ended up coming through a little bit more amped than I wanted. So my jets will definitely be blown out as soon as I turn this off. So I'm going to let Peeny linger here as long as she wants. We're going to go take an Epsom salt bath because my body is killing me. And 
we will transmit again tomorrow on Christmas Day. So I hope Santa is visits you all and brings you all the joy and things that you could desire from Santa. And tell him, and, you know, and listen, it's real. The magic is real. It is real, but you won't see it and you won't experience it if you don't believe it. Because we are shifting from a paradigm where believing you had to see it to believe it. And in the new paradigm, you have to believe it in order to see it. And if you're willing and able to believe for just the risk of two dollars my hypothesis is this is this has the potential to have an enormous real ripple effect so merry christmas to some of you on the other side of the planet my friends in australia watching my friends in europe watching oh, man. i just had a wave of like just peace and joy because I really do want to be with this as it unfolds. Because the truth is, while a few people see certain aspects, nobody but me has been able to validate this. And the work it's taken to self-validate at this level without 50,000 followers on Facebook feeding me energy, because guess what, you folks with that many followers, you're getting fed a lot of energy and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but where we're going, we need to train the vessels to understand they don't need any of that shit. Nobody needs that externally. Everything you need to validate anything within yourself lies within yourself. My personal opinion is it's hard to see that and know that and definitely hard to experience it if you're being fed by tens of thousands of people every day, I'm not trying to judge it. I'm just stating my experience has been holding on to something, living it with, I just crossed over a hundred subscribers a couple of months ago. So with almost nobody. And that's why I always say anybody that tunes in and gives me their time and their attention. I don't take any of that lightly because you are feeding this vision that's coming through me and i'm consciously taking the energy that gets anybody that feels drawn to anything i say i am it goes to the vision it's not something i am holding on for my ego i either direct it back to the person and say anything you're resonating with or loving or connecting with about me is in you. Otherwise, you wouldn't feel it and resonate with it. So feel it in you. And simultaneously directing it now and having projects to direct this energy, this attention energy. I didn't have that last time. And I had the attention of Microsoft P. I had the attention of some wallopy, powerful individuals in the third dimension. Most notably, Microsoft and my hugely powerful network back home in Michigan where I grew up. But I, I only had a certain amount of time to hold their attention. I had to turn it into something and I wasn't able to do that. But rest assured, I've learned that lesson this time. And Ripple 2020 is that something. So thank you. You are all co-creating in this beautiful experiment of energy. Merry Christmas and we'll talk to you tomorrow. See you later.